Well, uh, good evening and a very warm welcome to our Monday Thursday service. It, it should be live streaming on our YouTube channel and also uh, should be available later recorded on the other two YouTube channels. Uh, but I forgot to bring the USB stick, so I've got to go home and get it and pop it onto those channels. So it will be a little bit later than it might have been on uh, St. David's and St. Uh, St. Mary's and St. James channels. Tomorrow, uh, the service for Good Friday is a recording, and you can watch it whenever you want, uh, because it's already up there on all three channels. And on Easter Sunday, it will also be a recording, and the service will be there um, from reasonably early. I do hope to record some of it first thing Easter Sunday morning, so it, will take, it won't be up uh, first thing in the morning, but it will certainly be up by 10 o'clock, uh, hopefully on all of the channels, uh, so everybody can watch uh, the Easter service. Um, thank you to those who helped with uh, Palm Sunday last week, and uh, it was lovely to be able to share together with our German uh, colleagues. And uh, as, as, Serene, as Sabina said at the end of that service, uh, hopefully we don't have to do that again next Palm Sunday, but it has shown us that we can do that kind of thing from time to time, uh, which would be great to be able to do. Uh, I think that's all the notices I need to put out, uh, apart from to say, if there's anybody who's struggling to find where our services are, the sit setup is that we live stream on the, from, on the YouTube channel of the church that is holding the service that week. So the ten, at 10 o'clock, it should be live from that church. And I think uh, the first one, what's the first one after? Is it, I think we're here, are we? We're here, yes. So Easter Sunday is pre-recorded. Then the Sunday after, it's at, at St. David's in Airmin. Then the week after, it's St. Mary's. And then it's St. James in Rawcliffe. And if you follow that pattern, it's in the magazine as well. You should be able to get the live stream at 10 o'clock because hopefully they'll work then. And then we also upload the recording later onto the other channels, but it's not live on the other. So if you just look at your own YouTube channel, you won't necessarily find uh, the service uh, every week. So if we can pass that on, that's helpful uh, to anyone. I think that's all we need to know. Uh, the order of service should flow through in the for those in church in the Holy Communion book, and also the hymn numbers uh, do come up, and I'll, I'll tell you what they are. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with number 237 from Mission Praise. Uh, this is an old hymn. We know it well. Uh, it's a modern version of it, uh, sung you know, in a Celtic way. So in church, we'll listen if you want to sing along at home, do feel free to.
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honor and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, our Father, you've invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our Bible reading. The first reading is from Exodus 12, verses 1 to 4, 11 to 14. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month is to be the first month of the year for you. Give these instructions to the whole community of Israel. On the tenth day of this month, each man must choose either a lamb or a young goat for his household. If his family is too small to eat a whole animal, he and his next door neighbour may share an animal in proportion to the number of people and the amount that each person can eat. You are to eat it quickly, for you are to be dressed for travel, with your sandals on your feet and your stick in your hand. It is the Passover festival to honour me, the Lord. On the night, I will go through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn, male, both human and animal, and punishing all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on the doorposts will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and will not harm you when I punish the Egyptians. You must celebrate the day as a religious festival to remind you of what I, the Lord, have done. Celebrate it for all time to come. And this is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from the first letter of Corinthians, chapter 11, starting to read at verse 23. I passed on to you what I received from the Lord. On the night when the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body, it is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant, covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. You eat the bread and drink the cup. And when you do this, you are announcing that the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. We stand for the reading from the gospel. The Gospel reading this evening is taken from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. <clears throat> no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glor glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. We remain standing for the creed. And we'll say it as is set out here with me saying uh, the bits in the lighter type and everybody joining in in the bits in bold. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. Right 
we believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about this, the first time you made this memorial, we pray that it will help us to learn better how to remember you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do sit down. There's been a lot of argument over uh, the meaning of the Holy Communion service and how it has become structured in the way it is. And uh, some of it's helpful and some of it is not so helpful. And I don't intend to go into it in any depth here. But it is interesting to note that when Jesus uh, chose to set up in some way, whether in the way that we do it now, he was setting it up, or whether he was setting it up in a different way. When he chose to do it, he chose to do it on the occasion of the Passover. He chose to go to Jerusalem on the occasion of the Passover, knowing that he would die that weekend, which was the Passover. And the Passover was a remembrance at the beginning of the uh, Passover remembrance that, this, that they had every year, a, a young person would come up and say, tell us the story. Uh, not in those words, they were set words, and I can't quite remember what they are, but would ask the story to be retold of the original Passover. And then the story would be told again, the one we heard from Exodus, the story of how God rescued his people from Egypt. And it was ingrained into the people of Israel that God had acted to save them and to rescue them. And the uh, sacrificial lambs were a sign of what had happened, what was going to happen in a different way. They weren't a sacrifice for sin. Often, and in the way that the uh, Jewish laws operated, there were many times where sacrifice was made to atone for someone's sin, i.e. something else was put to death in order that you didn't have to die, in order that what you had done wrong could be put right. And people lived in those days with a very great fear that they needed to appease the gods. And, and all religions were very often focused around the need to appease the gods, to, to make sure that the gods were no longer angry with you and you would sacrifice because the gods were angry with you. And it, in the Jewish uh, religion, in the old covenant, which on this occasion Jesus creates a new covenant in, in that old covenant there was sacrifice for sin. And, uh, but... The Passover was not that. The Passover was a, a sacrifice in order that the blood might be put on the outside in order to create a symbolic meal which they would use to remember that God had saved them. And Jesus chooses the occasion of the Passover as the time when he brings in a new covenant. When he, by dying himself, saves them and asks that they remember his death, that instead of looking back to the Passover when the people of Israel were rescued, they should look back to Jesus' death when they were rescued. And certainly the, the death of Jesus is in some ways an atoning sacrifice. In some ways he dies where we could not, 
where in, in place of us because our punishment should be death for all the awful things that we do. And even the best of us end up doing awful things to one another. And we would ultimately not be fit to go to heaven because we have failures and weaknesses, because we have not done what is right. But Jesus dies in order that we can go to heaven because the righteous dies on behalf of the unrighteous. And certainly there is some of that picture, but the service that comes out at the Passover, the night before Jesus dies, is a remembrance of the death, not a sacrifice. And, and so the whole idea that uh, we might continue to sacrifice uh, when we come to communion, I think is probably mistaken. But the fact that we should remember is, also, is very, very significant. We should remember a lot about Christ. We are to be reminded of his death, but to be reminded of more. And we, for whatever reason, decided to uh, create this into the, the act of worship, which became very important in the early church and going back to uh, quite early in the church, it became a very important event. For whatever reason, they decided to take the moment of Jesus taking a cup and bread and sharing them as the significant symbol. Uh, and yet, Jesus does two other acts in the same uh, occasion, doesn't he? And asks them to do two other things. He washes their feet. And we could come every Sunday and have to wash each other's feet. What would that do to us? How would that affect us? And he tells them that this is a new covenant and I give you a new commandment within that covenant to love one another. And for those of us who live now, the idea of a God who we have to appease is not a, a, such an easy one to live with because we have imbibed the understanding that God loves us and God gives of himself for us and God dies for us. And we understand a God who loves us as the God who we are looking to. And so when the idea of sacrifice and atoning sacrifice and substitutional uh, death of Christ is put forward, some people even in the church say, well, well, that can't be true. That can't be what's happening because God loves and God wants is all about love. But it wasn't that before this moment. It wasn't that until Jesus comes and says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. And the way you're going to love one another is you're going to be slaves to one another. Because it's the slaves who wash the feet. It's the, the, the really rubbish people who of no significance who clean your feet as you come in uh, into the house in their setting. And Jesus says, that's what you're going to be. That's how you're going to show your love. And people will know you're Christians because you don't look down on anybody, but you look up to everyone and you look to raise everybody up. And so we could, if we wanted to, out of what happened on that first uh, Monday, Thursday, the changing of the Passover into uh, the Holy Communion. Uh, be washing one another's feet or be coming to church and recognizing that we are slaves and being reminded that if we want to be those who really follow Jesus, we need to be those who really serve, who really serve one another with deep care and compassion, who want to see love take over from a world where fear and anger, where the worries of not being able to find forgiveness and healing are put away. Where those things are put into the past and God saves, just as he did at the Passover, but God saves us from all that is awful and all that could tear us down and crush us. From all that uh, denies the, the best in what people can be, from all that puts people down 
through accident of birth, through accident of this, that or the other, that people end up lower than one or other. Sometimes you hear people who say, I've earned my great position. I, I, I heard somebody once say, you know, I'm worth 500 pounds a day. I think, to be honest, they were pretty lucky to have got to the job they did. If by accident of birth, they could equally have been cleaning the gutters or have ended up lying in the street. And those who have by accident of birth or for whatever other reason ended up in the worst places are those who God is asking us to raise up, as well as those who by accident of birth are already raised up. We become something equal and transformed. And when we look back and remember Jesus and his death, we don't just remember he died for us, but we remember he died to change us. And he died to change us to be what he wanted his disciples to be on that first uh, last supper, on that occasion when they met together. He wanted them to be people who were known by their love. And so later when we hear the song, A New Commandment, we might be reminded to think about that. And whenever we come and remember Christ's death, let us also remember that his death is one that makes us into something completely different. Completely different from what we were then, completely different from the world around us. Where our status is given by God's love for us. And other people are raised up by what God does through us. We pray that God may help us to be those who truly remember Jesus whenever we come to communion. Amen. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. All things come from you and of your own have we given you. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? We have the hymn, A New Commandment.
We come to our prayers of intercession. The response today, when I say, Lord, have mercy, the response, Christ, have mercy. Jesus, the candles shone brightly on Palm Sunday. This was a day of festival and welcome. Only you knew the truth that lay elsewhere. Jesus, hold us in your truth. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You taught passionately in the temple, offering the word of life, but you were hemmed in by the small-minded leaders of the people with their petty arguments about marriage in heaven and paying taxes to Caesar. Jesus, save us from such triviality. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You accepted the loving touch and anointing of a wise and wounded woman, but there were none thereafter who would care for your body, only those who would hurt it. Jesus, make us compassionate in all our ways. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You had supper with your friends and even gave Judas the seat of honor. But he it was who slipped out into the night and finished supper with the devil. Jesus, save us from delusion and deceit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hugged the ground in Gethsemane in an agony of faith and doubt. But your three best friends left you to it. While the future of the world was in the balance, they fell asleep. Jesus, keep us loyal and true in all our relationships. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Peter and John followed you to the high priest's house, and there by the charcoal fire, Peter denied he ever met you. Peter, who had sworn an hour earlier that he was yours forever. Jesus, give us courage to hold the faith under pressure. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were whipped half to death, humiliated before the crowd, friendless in a world of power and corruption. And then you heard the people's piercing cry, crucify him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord of our stricken world, there is nothing we can do to redeem our blindness in sending you to your death. You only can redeem. But particularly now, keep us in touch with the pain of the world while you are still hung out to die. And there may, and there may we ease you from your cross, tend your wounds, and offer you the friendship we fail to give on a green hill far away. This we ask in sadness and hope, for your sake and for ours. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us and receive this pledge of his love, let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. You then who truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbors, 
and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from this day forward in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those with heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St. John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, 
in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. you in eternal life.
Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, we offer you through your dear Son Jesus Christ this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice. Fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our last hymn is a version of Amazing Grace. I think it's uh, towards number 23, is it? Well, it's, one of the, it's in the beginning of the hymn book. Uh, I was going to print out a sheet, but I forgot. Uh, but most of the words, uh, I think most of you know, and they are on the screen.
shall soon dissolve like snow and the sun forbear to shine but God who called me will be forever will be forever